watching this on Moodle or you're floating by on YouTube, a very warm welcome. I'm here again with Bob Cook from Manchester Institute for Psychotherapy, again in my hometown of Manchester. <laughs> and um, I don't know about you Bob, but about this time of year I get phone calls at the college where I teach, people who want to become, for me it's counsellors but I'm sure psychotherapists. Yeah. Yeah. And um, they say, I want to be a psychotherapist, you're not quite our counsellor, and you're not the question I ask them is. What's that? I ask them, what brings you to phone me up? Why, oh, why oh, is it, what is it that, that brings you, what is it from your history good question. that brings you to my door? What a wonderful question back again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not as so astute as that, I usually just tell them. <laughs> I had somebody around about three years ago doing a PhD yes. on uh, the qualities top psychotherapists bring to their uh, business in, 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 to help cure, yes. to help uh, promote how therapy works. And we just went through them. But I wish now I'd thought to ask <laughs> asking that question. <laughs> but no, uh, what would be your, say, especially for the viewers, yeah. boy, what, what would your... Top five. I mean, you, you, you give one and I'll give one. We'll see. Okay. Well, I think um, the first, really the top one is humility. I can think of no other profession that is so privileged uh -huh. to have somebody sit in front of you as a counsellor telling you their stories. Uh -huh. And I always say to my trainees, or as I like to call them, colleagues in practice, that's how I refer to the people on my diploma course, I always say to them, Bob, you're just a bit further, I'm just a bit further along the road than you are. So I always say at the beginning of the practice space year, with colleagues in practice, I'm just slightly farther along down the road than you are. And oh. um, it's, a, you know, I always say when I, when I worked in, in, when I worked for Mind, we used to have a waiting room and I used to wonder in awe, really, at the clients who'd taken that brave step yeah. to say, I can't do it on my own, I need some help. Mm. And I always, I always look for humility, the fact that this is the last frontier of human communication, maybe, of two people coming together for the benefit of one. Wow, I really like that as a top tip. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I mean, my trainees are always asking me the question about yes. what uh, qualities uh, do we need to foster. I think humility, I think that's a really good top. One, one, one uh, sort of tip, a quality I think is really important is courage. <gasps> and I think it's very important that a therapist can find courage within their heart to go the extra mile. Yes, when it gets difficult. Yeah, with, with, with the client. Yes. And that's really important for the client to experience, but also it models to them courage that they can grasp hold of in their dark Absolutely. moments. Absolutely. Uh, that's brilliant. Yes. And I, you know, I say to my learners, I, I'm a great reader of Mayor Angelou, who's um, an American poet, and a, a wonderful, inspirational person. And she says, without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue consistently. Absolutely correct. Um, it, it's something um, that I think in the days of, uh, unfortunately I don't like this term, but I'm going to say defensive psychotherapy, mm -hmm. or in the area of litigation, many therapists are taught, I think, either verbally or even subliminally, to hold themselves back. Yes. And of course, we need to take that in consideration in terms of training and clinical expertise. Mm. But if we give up on the courage of our own spirit, yes. we are, I think, are, 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 do weak service or we don't help our clients. Absolutely. Oh. And it, you know, I know we come from two different places. And I, oh. you're, you're a TA therapist, I'm a person centered therapist. I'm a great believer it's from where we start. It's that place of where we start. We take a journey in our therapeutic interest yeah. down the different modalities. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's that place of where we start, and that's the first position, isn't it? Definitely. De definitely. So we've got humility. Yes. I really enjoy. Courage. Yes. And what would you say another one would be? And then I'll say another one. I would say openness to experience. 
Ah, what do, tell me a little bit more about what you mean by that. I, I, I'm, I'm doing a course here, this is a plug for your course, but I'm doing a course here. And um, it's, always, it's always tricky when you're introducing yourself, in the, for me, mm. myself, the people say, what do you do? And I say, I'm a counsellor. And then I say, I teach counsellors. And I always find myself adding on to the end of that, but I'm a student today. I'm ah. here to learn. And I, I say to my... Um, That's nice. I say to my students, nice. how, you know, I sit them at the first day when they come to do the diploma and I say, what will we learn together? What will I learn? What will you learn? How will we learn together? It's that never-ending openness to experience. Yeah, I really like that. And I'm gonna, that, that, that leads me to my next one. Okay. It is very similar to what you're talking about. And it's one of the most wonderful four-letter words in the English dictionary. Unfortunately, in the United Kingdom, there's only one word for what I'm talking about. In Greece, there's seven descriptions of the wow. same word. Wow. And that's love. Yes, absolutely. Now, if you can open up your heart to your clients, not much is going to go wrong. No. And, and that, of course, I'm saying that with um, experience and caution because I'm not talking about <laughs> you taking these the wrong way. I'm talking about opening up your heart, mm. coming alongside your clients, um, listening to their hearts, uh, compassion, mm. getting into the skin of the client that is in front of you. Yes. It's a heart-to-heart -heart experience. If that process could be facilitated, healing will happen. Yes, absolutely. Following on from what you just said. Um, I also think, one of the, one, how many tips are we up to now? I don't know, well, one more each. One more each. Yeah. What I'll do one. I, I, I think <coughs> in training, and, and that we both train, uh, we train different modalities, but we both train. Mm. I say don't rush the training process. Ah, yeah, now that is fantastic advice. Yeah. That's fantastic advice. Don't rush the training process. I, I remember, and if this person's watching, I, I, I apologise if it, it might sound offensive because I remember this phone call. But I got, <laughs> I got a phone call from someone who got a master's yeah, yeah, degree yeah, in psychology, yeah. which is great. Yeah, yeah. And they wanted to come on to the diploma, and I said to them, Have you done any face to face work? Have you done yeah. any volunteer work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you done anything like that? And the person said, No, no, I haven't. And I'm very defensive. They said, But I've got a master's degree. I've got a master's wow. degree in psychology. And I said, let me tell you a story, which I'm going to share with the viewers in your book. Many years ago, before I became a counsellor, I was in business and I had to go to British Aerospace and I met the man who designed the Airbus. Wow. God. And he told me all about the Airbus. He told me about the fact that the paint had special paint that allowed less weight, rivets that were smooth, the computer systems. And he, he was the man who literally was one of the designers, he put it together. And I said to him, what's it like to fly? And he looked at me and he said, I don't know, I'm not a pilot. <laughs> and it's what a wonderful story. And I said, the, I, I said, you know, if you've got a master's degree in psychology, um, wonderful. But there's a whole big difference between having the theory, knowing, knowing the theory of the human condition, and interfacing and flying that theory in a therapeutic sense. Right, I, I'm going to stop there. I think that's the best story I've ever heard in a long time. I have one plea though. Okay. And that's my quality, uh, and that's humour. Yes. <laughs> I really think it's important to bring humour into the therapeutic dialogue. Yes. You can spend a long time in the toilet. In other words, <laughs> <laughs> you can have your head down the bloody toilet sink as long as you like, but you know it's dark in there and you have to come up for breath. So it's a mixture of lightness and darkness. If you stay in the intensity and darkness in the third beauty session, too much healing will find a hard place. Yeah. You need some lightness. So I'm not talking about telling jokes. I'm just talking about a lightness to the process. Yes. And the humour is a very important quality to foster. It's a it's a humanness. Yes. And that humanness brings in a dialogue. And that dialogue brings understanding. And that understanding brings awareness and that awareness brings cure. Yes. Abs absolutely. And on that 
And those wise words and the top tips, which I think have probably got past five now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's uh, stopped. <laughs> if you're wanting to train as a counsellor or a psychotherapist, we'll, we'll, we'll give you a, yeah. we'll, we'll give ourselves a plug. So, Bob, you train here at Manchester Institute. Just tell the viewers a little bit about what you do. Yeah, I train people to be psychotherapists using transactional analysis, and I teach people to be supervisors. And we have a vibrant, continuing professional department. And Rory, quick plug for you. Quick plug for me. I'm uh, a tutor at Warrington Collegiate. We teach level two, which is a 10 week introduction. Yes. The 33 week of learning to become a pilot, certificate in counselling skills. Yes. And then for those who want to move into the personal sense of modality, um, we do a two year diploma in counselling. And I'm sure that my learners and your learners are watching this will be laughing their socks off. <laughs> well, at least there'll be some humour in it. Absolutely. And as all we always say at the end, <laughs> thank you for watching. Yeah, thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>